means that you're more energetic and you want to move around and run around more. It means that I can be energetic and also have lots of fun. I feel like it's improved my life a lot because if I probably didn't have ADHD, I would probably be like completely a normal person. When you're initially sort of told that your child might have ADHD, that, that the immediate thought is fear and it's complete and utter, not having an understanding of what that means, how that is going to affect your child, how that's going to affect you as a family and what your next steps are. So when you start going down the process of getting a diagnosis, um, that can be quite intimidating. From a support group's perspective, what we try to do here is to allay those fears, is to reduce the stigma. But the parents that I've been supporting over the years that have gone through the QB test process have all said how much it enhanced their ability to get that diagnosis and get the support quickly. Because then they can go back to the school, they've got the evidence, it's, it's pure evidence, black and white, right there, that they can then say, right, we have this diagnosis of ADHD, now can we get the support that we need for our child? I've been using the QB test for over nine years and I think the thing that has always impressed me is that it's an objective measure. The problem has always been this myth that ADHD doesn't really exist and it is just about naughty children and bad parents. And for me, one of the reasons why that myth has continued is because there hasn't been any objective evidence and we've been very reliant on subjective methods such as questionnaires and observations uh, rating scales and just reports from parents and school. So the QB test is the first real almost investigative process which has allowed some objectivity and the advantage has been that the parent and the child can actually see the outcome of the test. I should also add that it's particularly valuable when it's a non-diagnosis of ADHD. The confidence in technology is such nowadays that if the computer says no it's not ADHD um, the parents are much more accepting of that and we're having much smoother consultations when that process has happened. But overwhelmingly, the ability to be able to see the result of the test and to actually compare it to a control that is age and gender matched has really proved invaluable. I think an early diagnosis is really important because the first part of any management of ADHD is about psychoeducation. It's essential for parents to understand why their child is behaving or learning in the way that they are. And that also actually accounts for the teaching staff who need to know the challenges that they're having in the classroom from that child are explainable by a neurodevelopmental issue. And so that early diagnosis allows recognition and it allows the management techniques to be changed slightly. You can make the differences with just a little bit of information and understanding about ADHD. If you can get that diagnosis and help in early, that child has every chance to reach their potential. Kind of, I really liked it and I would really like to do it again because I love the little clicky dots and it's just so much fun. He was went to the speech therapist and then he was um, sent to Dr Mustafa and then Dr Mustafa put him forward for a QB test so we, me and my mum took Jake down there and sat him and he had his little band around his head and he had to stand and sit in front of a screen and each time there was a dot on the screen he had to click a button which then turned into a fishing rod and it kind of just yeah it was everywhere around the room and then it wasn't that long before the accident after that that they came back that he'd obviously got the higher score for ADHD and when you look the little line on his head was like all over the paper so yeah it was he yeah, he did really well though bless him if you go on parents say and the school say it's my in my case it was conflicting 
even the two teachers from year three and four both wrote different things and Kim Selby couldn't work that out herself. How is it these two teachers saw him less than six months apart and they're both saying different things? And then mum's saying completely different to how he is. So with this, it's an independent thing rather than hearsay, like she's saying, he's saying sort of thing. So yeah, I think it helped because medically they can see it and it, it can be scored. Um, when I looked at the results and they was kind of explained to me, it was like, wow, yeah, this is, it's kind of some data that you can look at, which you don't really get along the journey, do you? So it's some da it, it was kind of reassuring to know that, yeah, that, this is actually happening. This is the data that's showing how her brain is functioning um, under those stress situations. So yeah, it did feel, um, did make, make us feel, I think, a bit more confident in that we knew we was doing the right thing. Yeah. Life is a lot easier now. We're not walking on extra eggshells because we know why. And he, he's given that time during the day just to focus and be calm. So life is definitely better now if we've got a diagnosis. Don't judge. You may see what you think is a naughty child, but there is definitely a lot more going on. Just embrace it. Embrace it. Yeah, the world just needs to let go of all the stigma and just embrace it and you know, just know there's so many great people in the world and people with ADHD can do great things, don't, don't hold them back. <laughs>